Hey guys, welcome back, I'm Jay. In this episode, we're gonna look at RDS security. RDS encrypts your databases using keys you manage with AWS Key Management Service or KMS. Data that is encrypted at rest includes the underlying storage for DB instances, automated backups, read replicas, all logs, and snapshots. You can encrypt your RDS DB instances and snapshots at rest by enabling the encryption option. RDS handles authentication of access and decryption of your data transparently, with a minimal impact on performance. You don't need to modify your database client applications to use encryption. RDS encryption uses the industry standard AES-256 encryption algorithm to encrypt your data on the server that hosts your RDS instance. A read replica of an RDS encrypted instance is encrypted using the same key as the primary DB instance, when both read replica and primary instance are in the same AWS region. If the primary DB instance and read replica are in different AWS regions, you need to use the encryption key for that region. RDS also supports encryption for Oracle and Microsoft SQL Server with Transparent Data Encryption or TDE. With TDE, the database server automatically encrypts data before it's written to storage, and automatically decrypts data when it's read from storage. Although TDE can be used with built-in encryption at rest, using TDE and encryption at rest simultaneously might slightly affect the performance of your database. You can optionally use TDE and Oracle with AWS Cloud HSM. It allows you to securely generate, store, and manage your cryptographic keys in single-tenant hardware security module appliances within the AWS Cloud. You can only enable encryption for an RDS DB instance when you create it, not after the DB instance is created. However, you can have an encrypted copy of the DB instance by using an encrypted copy of an unencrypted DB snapshot. For example, you can create a snapshot of your DB instance and then create an encrypted copy of that snapshot. Then you can restore a DB instance from the encrypted snapshot. Finally, you have an encrypted copy of your original DB instance. DB instances that are encrypted can't be modified to disable encryption. After an encrypted DB instance is created, you cannot disable the encryption. Both DB instance and its read replicas are either encrypted or unencrypted. You cannot have an encrypted read replica of an unencrypted DB instance, or an unencrypted read replica of an encrypted DB instance. You cannot restore an unencrypted backup or snapshot to an encrypted DB instance. KMS encryption keys are specific to the AWS region that they are created in. For example, to copy an encrypted snapshot from one AWS region to another, you must specify the KMS key of the destination region. You can encrypt communications between the application and DB instance using Secure Socket Layer, SSL, or Transport Layer Security, TLS. RDS creates an SSL certificate and installs the certificate on the DB instance when the instance is provisioned. To establish encrypted connections, each DB engine has its own process for implementing SSL or TLS. Once an encrypted connection is established, data transferred between the DB instance and your application will be encrypted during transfer. You can also require your DB instance to only accept encrypted connections. RDS is integrated with AWS IAM. It provides you the ability for your IAM users and groups, so that they can control actions on specific resources, such as DB instances, snapshots, parameter groups, and options groups. You can attach identity-based policies to an IAM user role or group, and specify allowed or denied actions on RDS resources. For example, Amazon Reads Read-Only Access is an AWS-managed policy that grants read-only access to all RDS resources for the AWS account specified. Amazon Reads Full Access grants full access to all RDS resources for the AWS account specified. In addition, you can use IAM condition policy with RDS tags for fine-grained access control. Suppose your DB instances have a tag called Environment, with different values such as Dev, Test, and Prod. You can use an IAM condition policy to check on DB tag and grant different permissions for DB instances of different environments. When you create a new DB instance, you will create a master user account. The master user account is a native database user account that allows you to log on to your DB instance with certain privileges. As a security best practice, AWS strongly recommends that you do not use the master user directly in your applications. Instead, you should use a database user created with the minimal privileges required for your application. You can use security groups to control traffic in and out of a DB instance. 
There are three types of security groups are used with RDS. VPC security groups control access to DB instances and EC2 instances inside a VPC. If the DB instance was created in a VPC, it must have a VPC security group that authorizes the connections. Both DB security group and EC2 classic security group are considered legacy. You only need them when you work with EC2 classic. By default, network access is disabled for a DB instance. You can specify rules in a security group that allow access from an IP address range and port, or another security group. Each VPC security group rule enables a specific source to access a DB instance in a VPC, that is associated with that VPC security group. The source can be an IP range, or another VPC security group. By specifying a VPC security group as the source, you allow incoming traffic from all instances that use the source VPC security group. VPC security groups can have rules that govern both inbound and outbound traffic. Normally the outbound rules do not apply to DB instances, because traffic are normally initiated from DB clients. For example, you have an RDS DB instance in the private subnet of the VPC. You have a DB client application installed on an EC2 instance, launched in the public subnet of the VPC. To server public traffic to the EC2 instance, you need to create a security group for the EC2 instance, and allow income traffic from the internet. You can create a security group for the RDS DB instance, and specify the source using the private IP address of the EC2 instance. The EC2 instance has now connected to the RDS DB instance. You can establish a private connection between your VPC and RDS API endpoints, using an interface VPC endpoint that is powered by AWS Private Link. Private Link enables you to privately access RDS API operations from a VPC, without an internet gateway, NAT device, VPN connection, or AWS Direct Connect connection. With Interface VPC Endpoint, instances in your VPC don't need public IP addresses to communicate with RDS API endpoints to launch, modify, or terminate DB instances. Your instances don't need public IP addresses to use any of the available RDS API operations. Traffic between your VPC and RDS doesn't leave the AWS. Each interface endpoint is represented by one or more Elastic Network Interfaces or ENIs in your subnet. RDS supports making calls to all of its API actions from your VPC. RDS supports VPC endpoint policies. By default, full access to Amazon RDS is allowed through the endpoint. You can also use interface endpoints and AWS private link to privately access RDS data API for Aurora serverless from your VPC. RDS Data API allows you to issue SQL commands against an Aurora serverless cluster by simply invoking an HTTPS API endpoint. In this episode, we've learned RDS security. You can encrypt your RDS database at rest using AWS KMS. Data that is encrypted at rest includes the underlying storage for DB instances, automated backups, read replicas, all logs, and snapshots. RDS encryption uses the industry standard AES-256 encryption algorithm to encrypt your data on the server that hosts your RDS instance. You can encrypt communications in transit between the application and DB instance using SSL or TLS. RDS is integrated with AWS IAM. It provides you the ability for your IAM users and groups so that they can control actions on specific resources, such as DB instances, snapshots, parameter groups, and options groups. You can use VPC security groups to control traffic into or out of DB instances from EC2 instances inside a VPC. You can establish a private connection between your VPC and RDS API endpoints, using an interface VPC endpoint that is powered by AWS Private Link. Okay, that's all for RDS security. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode. Hope you've enjoyed watching this episode. If you like the video, please help us and hit the like button. If you want to watch more tutorials, please subscribe to the Cloudemy TV channel. Make sure to turn on the notification and stay tuned. At Cloudemy, we're passionate about cloud and AI technology. Please share your feedback and thoughts in the comments below. Feel free to let us know what topics you'd like to watch. Happy watching and happy learning!